we're going to be giving a spoiler warning right now. If you've never seen The Shining, you should probably watch it before this episode because we are going to definitely ruin that whole movie for you. I cannot watch The Shining without thinking about what we're going to talk about today. Same. Have you ever played the game Warmer and Colder as a child? Like when you're going through and you're trying to find something and everyone's like, warmer, warmer, colder. Stephen King wrote the book The Shining and Stanley Kubrick made the movie. We're going to be mainly talking about the movie version today and not the book. But the subtle differences between the two and the reason why I brought up the warmer, colder game is because Stephen King writes with a warmer tone. He talks about it a lot. He has a warmer feel to his movies or his books rather. And Stanley Kubrick took The Shining and made a cold version of it. In the book, the hotel burns. In the movie, it freezes. Hmm. And I really feel like as Stephen King was watching this movie, and there's plenty of interviews out there where he hated this film, quoting it like it's a beautiful car without an engine or casting choices were terrible. And he just was, it's his least favorite creation off of one of his books. And it happens to be one of the world's most favorite creations off this off his book. And I think it's because of the unique perspective that Stanley Kubrick did with the movie, but also his imagery, the score, and just the haunting way he edited it. With me today is my friend Kay Rood. Hi. So why why are we talking to you about this today? So we actually had a tattoo session, of course. With Jack Torrance, and we just went down this rabbit hole for like, what, eight hours talking about all the conspiracies behind The Shining. Yeah. Now I'm here. He's like, you should be on the show. And I'm like, hell yeah. So. Well, that was when it was a podcast, too. So yeah. we're like, we could spend hours talking about it. Now I'm going to condense our whole conversation down to like 20 minutes. I hope we can do it. I kind of dove into it when we did the tattoo, like the Wendy Theory, all that other stuff. So like I've dove into it a little bit. Not the book, but the movie, yes. There's a couple of theories out mm-hmm. there. But we're going to mainly talk about the Wendy theory. Yeah. Uh, So there's another theory out there about The Shining um, where it is about S.A., um, where Jack is S.A.ing his child, Danny, the entire time. And I hate that theory. Are we talking about the theory where it was like, I can't have this dude on my arm? You know? Yes. Okay. Yeah. So thinking of that theory, like made me cringe there's like bears in each episode like on the floor and posters um the scene the like number one like i guess like sex scene where the guy's like dressed up in a bear costume about to perform whatever he's doing like it's a ghost right Mm -hmm. but if you like dive into that theory so in the beginning like way in the beginning he makes up tony Mm -hmm. right so kids that have s a abuse make up imaginary friends sometimes and do like things like this And he's very, like, introverted, you know, not really talking to Jack Torrance in this movie. But that one scene, right before he came here, he's like, I go get my fire truck. Then he goes up there, and he's, like, awkwardly holding his kid and doing this weird grimace. You wouldn't hurt dad or mom, would you? No. Why'd you say that? Uh, Yeah. yeah. Uh, Dude, And then, And then, okay, so then right after that scene, to back up that theory, which I don't want to entertain any more past this. Yes, we're done. (laughs) Danny, you see Danny leaving, and he has the Apollo shirt on. Yes. Yeah. It, which leads into the theories that Stanley Kubrick is admitting that he faked the moon landing and blah, blah, blah. Right. Which was Space Odyssey was, was, was his film. And mm-hmm. that's a very popular theory is that he was actually hired by NASA to do the moon landing. So there's Apollo shirts and there's like a lot of space notes all mm-hmm. over that movie, too, um, to kind of brush onto that theory as well. But right when Danny's leaving the room, he's got the Apollo shirt on and the way the rocket is facing up and basically oh, exploding <gasps> it's okay. right after that scene kind of like showing you that i don't know anyway i don't, yeah. I don't want to entertain it we're not going to talk about that one yeah. any more than what we already just did the small details though isn't it wild like yeah. when you rewatch it you're like i didn't see that before and it means something there's a problem i have with this and i'm going to blow holes all in the windy theory too mm-hmm. there's there's a problem i have when there's a movie like this that is so successful and has such a creative outlook and there's so many transitional scenes where like at this exact moment, you can look the way the screen goes in this way. If you're a hammer, everything looks like a nail. Yeah. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Like you're absolutely going to try to find all these things to meet your. And if you're like, well, I believe in this theory. Well, you can start bending things 
that and that's way. where I think the Wendy theory kind of loses me. What is the Wendy theory? So the Wendy theory to me, um, maybe to you too, but I believe she's having like some kind of like psychological episode. Yes. The Wendy theory is Wendy in the movie is to believe to have some kind of schizophrenia. And they never, obviously it's a theory. So that's not said because in yeah. the movie it's ghosts, right? The way to discover when she's actually having an episode to, di- to discern from reality to one of her episodes mm-hmm. is if the camera view is from behind. And in The Shining, if you know, like the famous scenes of Danny riding down the hall in the strike, all the camera scenes are from behind. So according to the Wendy theory, that's all Wendy's perception. Yeah, of it's like what it's it, yeah, like her reality. Yeah, it's her yeah. her creation. So like the mm-hmm. the evil woman in two thirty seven is actually Wendy, and she's the one who hurts Danny. But where this kind of gets backed up with Stanley Kubrick again is it's highly believed, being such a prolific magnificent filmmaker Mm -hmm. wouldn't have this many continuity errors, but there are scenes where they walk into this room and there's a light switch on the wall. And then later on when it's from behind a scene from behind, there is no light switch. Mm -hmm. Uh, Furniture moves. The stickers. Like that was important in the beginning. You're like, the dopey stickers. stickers. Yeah. They're gone. Um, And so like the light fixtures on the ceiling, it isn't just like this table has been moved. There's a bunch of that too, but it's like a whole pool table when they're walking in there. The pool table has the pool ball, uh, side of it and then on the other side it just has a cue ball so like later on the pool table flips around mm-hmm. uh, Danny's trike is actually a different color when they show up and there's all these different things that don't really make sense and if she's not focusing on these details or even understands these details let's get into this a little bit you're an officer mm-hmm. you, you mind if I say that yeah that's fine so you're an officer downtown mm-hmm. Indianapolis yeah crazy so you yeah. <laughs> it's fun <laughs> <laughs> so do you know anything about the read technique I do not. Okay, How so do the, I not know. Well, the the read technique it's more of a detective side of it, but the read technique is about getting a baseline for somebody. So, mm. like when you're interrogating someone, or you're you, you basically even like just on the streets, like when you're patrolling. Yeah. You start I asking just people questions. Yeah, I, yeah, I did. Oh, it you do it every day. It called, yeah, yeah. <laughs> and as you get into it, you'll you'll kind of figure out like. Okay, this is how this is the cadence of how they talk. Okay, mm-hmm. this is let me get the basic read, uh, and it's obviously spelled differently, but the basic yeah. read of how these people are, and then when you start throwing curveballs into it, yeah, you see, you know, it's they pick up when they're lying. Different. Yeah, and yeah. so in the movie The Shining, if you're looking at the Wendy theory, the beginning of it is your read. That's your base. Everything that Jack is doing when he's doing the walkthrough without Wendy there is reality. That's where you see the pool tables the right way. That's where you see this is this way. And mm, these yeah. rooms are this way. And it, and, that, and then when she shows up, you see how things are already kind of different, but other things are the same. Like there's a sign for the map in front of the maze when they're walking outside. But when mm-hmm. Wendy's thinking about it, the map is completely uprooted. It's replaced by a bench and the map is in front of it. Did you just watch this movie or did you just have a photographic memory? Uh, yeah, photographic memory. Because I'm just trying to like remember and I'm like, what the? Yeah, I was going to write them all out, but. <laughs> People can look and you can look into yeah. the theory yourself. I'm yeah. just kind of basically talking about the the little things. Yeah, no, it's 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 in there. You'd make a good alt. Yeah, I was gonna right, actually yeah. at one point. There's a bunch of little things like you said earlier. Talked mm-hmm. about one of your favorite scenes is when she shows up and she's like, "What are you uh, what yeah. are you working on, hon?" And he's like, "Do you see me typing?" Like, yeah, and that's when like you kind of like so like Wendy to me is like this innocent little you know mom trying to take care of her kid, trying to be a good wife like throughout. The beginning, right? Where you're finding, like, reading her, her baseline. And then you kind of see Jack just being, like, this dick. Like, why is he going off on this girl? You know? And that's when, the, like, the Wendy theory, I'm like, it kind of makes you wonder how many times she, like, not necessarily bothers him, but it, like, jumps into where the camera goes backwards, like, shortly, I think, after that, like, furniture starts disappearing when she's leaving. And, like, to her, she was, like, asking him about his writing, right? But... Where that didn't even happen, remember? But see, devil's advocate with that yeah. is that if I'm working on something and you come mm-hmm. up to me and bug me, I'm being like, annoyed. damn it, Kate, I'm trying yeah. to do this. And then also, too, like, it's kind of like the Wendy theory is kind of anti-woman, it almost mm-hmm. seems like. Poor Fucked Jack up. is just yeah. innocently mm-hmm. just trying to write his book. And you're talking about, too, how, like, immediately Jack Torrance in that, in Jack mm-hmm. Nicholson's character in that in the movie is, like, kind of off his rocker, kind of just immediately a jerk. Right. Yeah. Yeah. He's already kind of like psycho. Yeah. So Stephen King hated that movie for many reasons, but that was one of the main ones. He said that Jack played Jack. <laughs> it's confusing. Jack Nicholson <laughs> it, it played Jack wild. Torrance. Yeah. 
like an unhinged guy already. Mm -hmm. In the book, Jack changes. The hotel changes him. Yeah. He's already ready to kill his family by the time we first meet him. Yeah. Why didn't you eat your breakfast? Like, and they're, they're not even to the hotel yet. He's like, it's okay. He's heard it on the television. And you're yeah. like, he talks he's already really weird. a creep. Like, yeah. but then that's also Jack, yeah. Jack Nicholson. So he played so good. Like yeah. I was just talking about that with somebody. I'm like his character, like his grimaces, like everything is just so awesome. Yeah. Like, he nailed it. Now, see, I, I love him for the movie, but as far as like the book wise, yeah, that's where that it's very, very cold to where. Mm-hmm. You know, he had a warmer heart. He was a father, had a mistake, drank too much one night, hurt his son. Yeah. And then the ho- so there was already a seed of that part of him in him and the hotel pulled it out. So the movie is a little bit tainted, right? By mm-hmm. Jack Nicholson's actually acting and who Jack is by his face, right? Yeah. Yeah. Um, but Shelley Duvall, who played Wendy, mm-hmm. also has to have a little bit of play in that too. Yeah. Stanley Kubrick treated her like crap. Really? Yeah, that was about a, a year of grueling filming. He constantly pushed her. She actually had mental breakdowns. She was sick a lot on that on the mm-hmm. set. She would constantly be covered up by a blanket laying down, and he would just yell at her. He, it was, And there's many, many interviews out there, even with Jeff Nicholson, where he's like, I had a very different experience filming The Shining wow. than Shelley did. Shelley, I mean, look, she got exploited by Dr. Phil a couple of years yeah. ago. Stanley Kubrick pushed her, like the actress, mm-hmm. to a point of breaking. So, of course, she has this, like, I'm breaking. And there was another video online, I think it was the Wendy Theory debunked, um, where it's like, you know, hey, you guys are looking at your screen right now, and you see this cup? This is a cup, right? Okay. Then drink it. Mm-hmm. So many times we have this like moment where we're like, oh, this is a picture of a cup. That's a cup. It's like, it's not yeah. a cup. It's a picture of a cup. Mm-hmm. Can you fill it with liquid? Or will it just run down the canvas? Yeah. So we have this like moment in our, like. That's interesting. It is, right? Yeah, it's so interesting. Yeah. And I think that's a lot of times where people get obsessed with movies like this one. When you look at it like that and you look at, okay, it's a hotel. Mm-hmm. Right? Yeah. Really? Because Maybe. Because the outside of it was a hotel in Oregon, but inside was shot at a studio in like London. That is true. Right? Yeah. It's not a hotel. It's like movie sets. It's a set. Yeah. It's a bunch of sets with a bunch of hallways. Okay. You're and ruining a bunch it of for rooms. Me. Talk I'm about sorry. Something else. Well, <laughs> okay. uh, <laughs> it is real. But, <laughs> well, yeah. there is. You yeah. can go to the one that inspired Stephen King. It's not the That's same. That's in Colorado. Though. Yeah, I know. But it's not the same hotel. Yeah. Because a hotel doesn't exist. So let's Wild. let's go to that. Blasphemy. I know, right? Mm. Sorry. Sorry to, to <laughs> burst your your jack bubble. <laughs> My child. Yeah. <laughs> it's a lie. <laughs> We're looking at a hotel. Yeah. But remember, it's not a hotel. It's a set. It's not a cup. It's a video of a cup. There's got to be leeway with how many times Stanley Kubrick did a shot. He's notorious of doing like multiple shots over mm-hmm. multiple days. Continuity errors are going to happen all day long. It's on film. If oh, you watch. So you're saying like he messed up and it's yes. not the Wendy theory. Uh, he messed up a lot. Yeah. If you start looking in his continuity be. theory, uh, it fails. Yeah. Right. I mean, watch Eyes Wide Shut. There's continuity errors all over that. Mm-hmm. Clockwork Orange, there's continuity errors yeah, er- over fun. all that. There's no shortage of ha- how many times he's messed up with continuity. Plus, you got to remember, most films, big budget films like this too, there's a guy whose whole job is continuity errors. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? He dropped the ball. Let me ask you something. So when it goes to the camera going forward and backwards, do you just, do you just think that's how he wanted to film it? Yes. Or like, you do? Yes. Okay. Because like, it's kind of like how you like... When people think something, they just run with it. Like I ran with the Wendy theory Mm -hmm. and now I'm backtracking a little bit. So, so, okay. Let me, let me hit you with, with this, with the Wendy theory. Right. Cause that's why I liked uh, that day in the booth. I really was really fun watching your brain just melt. It was, you were like, Oh, my arm was melting. And then I was just like, what the fuck? Like he's just blowing my mind. So (laughs) well, it wasn't me blowing your mind. It was a YouTube guy. Yeah, it was. But (laughs) I was like, you know, this is really fun. And that's why I was like, this would be a good podcast because I wonder how many other people, and I hope we're conveying it properly enough. Mm-hmm. But uh, yeah. you definitely watch the Windy Theory online and you'll be like, oh my God. But at yeah. the same time, remember, if you're a hammer, everything looks like a nail, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah, I have a good one. We'll touch on it later that I like just found out two days ago. And I was like, ooh, Adam would like this one. What one? Something that he yeah, hit Yeah, that movie? he hit. Yeah. Let's hear it. Maybe, okay, let me get my phone because this is a good one. Um, it actually goes where he's talking to Ullman and there's like a picture on the wall and part of the picture. So I got to look at my notes, but, um, it's where he's like, there's no skiing in the area. 
there's a poster that has like Monarch in the scene where the Grady twins are at the end of the hallway. Mm-hmm. And it has Monarch, which is like skiing, resort, stuff like that. But in the beginning, it's like there's no skiing. So um, the single poster in the background is just like one shot of the film. But it's like CIA's infamous MK Ultra experiment. Have you heard of that? Mm-mm. Okay, so those experiments, they like pretty much tested drugs on individuals just to see the reaction. So part of the, just like the little blips, like the monarch, the skiing reference, all that stuff, I was just showing that like Jack's on acid and the CIA is testing him. So all these like psychological things that he's seeing and like the bartender or like Grady or anything like that is just like the CIA experiment with like his mind. It's like weird. I'm not so, explaining it well. Well, no, no, I think you are. Like, I think so. That there's a whole other theory out there. Mm-hmm. Basically, what you just discovered that it's actually a CIA. Yeah. Like, like the any MK, signs in it. It's like MK Ultra. Experiment. Well, see, that would kind of that kind of leads yeah. into when Ullman, right hires mm-hmm. him. Yeah. And he's like, well, he has to know. Yeah, he's like, it's not a scheme. He says it. He's like, this isn't a scheme. Right. And that like goes to like, well, what scheme? And then is everybody it? leaves. Yeah. You know? It's oh no, really we, we take all the beer out of here, sir. Yeah, yeah. The Simpsons made fun of that in the Shining episode. I haven't seen that. Really? No, I so need to see it. The Simpsons it. did it because the they do everything. Yeah, I love yeah, them. That's shocking. Yeah. And it's like, he's like, uh-huh. oh, you got the Shining. He goes, oh, you mean the Shining? Shh. Mm-hmm. Do you want to get sued? No beer and no TV makes Homer go something, something. Oh and then, and then as it. they're leaving, Mr. Burns, because he's obviously the hotel like lead guy, mm-hmm. he's like, hey, Mr. Burns, do you think uh, taking away all the beer and TV is what makes people go crazy, murder their families? Well, Maybe. And, he, and then they leave, you know what I mean? Yeah. I My friend actually sent me it because I asked him, I was like, you know, what is your like big conspiracy like theory? Because I'm like, I'm not the only one. You're not the only one. Like someone has a theory about this movie, right? And that was his. He's like, I think he's like on this acid trip. And I think he's like a writer. And like when he's, so the fire, or the fire truck scene, when Danny goes up there, he's staring at the wall. Because when you're, when you're on acid for days and having these moments, sleep all day, up all night, typing, he's just No, officer, of how would you know that? I don't know. Um, training and experience. Because I don't know that. <laughs> I have friends, maybe. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So anyway, yeah. Move them. Yeah. So. Your superiors look- are looking into you right now. Yeah, my hometown was rough a little bit. So <laughs> it's just life experience. I like that. Yeah. And once again, that's one of the main reasons why I like this movie is because you can look at it from so many different ways. All these people mm-hmm. with different tools are going to see it and then you could make it fit. Yeah. Every bit of it. Well, then if you like the end, right? Well, there's one picture where Jack's actually in the picture from like the 20s. Yeah, doing right? the Baphomet. Yeah. So it's just like, if did, it's did a you scheme. catch that? Yeah, I did. Yeah. <laughs> I tried to As above, it. so below? Oh, didn't get it. The, the Baphomet over. pose? Yeah. He's yeah. he's doing I as above, so below? That. Oh, well, wow. he is. You learned something new about the movie again. Mm, yeah. See? Yeah. yeah. It's just like, how's he in that picture? Like, if this is current time. What time are we in? Well, that follows you the know? Wendy theory. Or let's talk about the last bit of this, okay? The Wendy theory is completely debunked by one thing the Wendy theory has. And the Wendy theory, <laughs> how does Jack get out of the, the freezer? How does Jack oh, yes. kill them? Yeah. How does Jack all these things? How's Jack in the picture, right? Mm-hmm. Because Wendy actually killed Jack and drug him out in the maze because the Wendy theory wraps up saying that when you see Jack frozen, there's way more snow on him than what could have fallen in one night. Oh, That's absolutely. The most ridiculous part of that theory. You agree with that? Yeah. Mm-hmm. You do? Yeah, you live so- in Indiana. You know how much snow we've seen in one day? And if this is supposed sure. to be in Colorado, are you kidding me? I mean, I Six guess. Six feet it, of snow can drop yeah. in one night. I was thinking to my morbid brain, not the snow, but more of the decomp of his body. Like just, I don't know, he's frozen. Yeah. But just the way it is, like. Um, we actually talked about, so Wendy actually killed him when she put him in that pantry, mm-hmm. right? So, like, we see him, like, banging, trying to get out, like, and then Grady comes to visit him and Grady lets him out. Mm-hmm. Um, I think that she killed him um, because, you know, whatever he was doing, whatever fought, fight they had, she knocked him out, but it actually killed him. Yeah. Put him in there. And then she... So, wait, you, so you still believe this Wendy theory completely? I don't know. I'm, like, 75%, but... Honestly, the acid trip makes sense to me too. Like, if you really read into it, which I encourage you to, like the MK Ultra CIA, like yeah, they tested all it. these drugs, and it's like the perfect experiment. It's this guy and his family. Well, it sounds like know? what they've done. All the three letter agencies are scary. <clears throat> Why is it that every time 
they're spirits or ghosts. People just try to make all these theories up to get rid of all the supernatural. So, yeah. Because yeah, in, the, in the Wendy theory, there are no spirits. It's all in her head. She's just a schizophrenic weirdo who murdered her husband and made it all up that he killed everybody. Do you think it was a ghost? I like it as it is. Which is just I like the movie as it is. I like it being spirits. I like he's a part of the hotel at the end of it because the spirits of choir him. Of course you do. I do. I do. I (laughs) like the spirits. And I'm really tired of everyone trying to take away ghosts from out of this. You know, I don't like the fact that they take the ghost out. Maybe we want to see more because we trust in Stanley Kubrick. Mm -hmm. Maybe we don't trust in Stanley Kubrick. So we want to see more. Maybe we just want to see more because they don't make anything good lately enough for us to actually delve into it. I mean, what last movie was made like this that's talked about like this? I can't even think of it. You know what I mean? Other than like Star Wars and things like that, there's no documentaries about all kinds of different. Mm -mm. You know what I mean? You have to be Batman for that to happen. Yeah. And this is like, if you watch it, like when I, from what I remember, I remember there being more ghosts. I remember like more things happening, right? It's actually a slow movie, like to get into. Which would be realistically you know? like a haunting. Yeah. Yeah. My biggest debunk, and then we'll truly let's end it on this one because okay. we could just talk about this forever. Yeah, I know. So my <laughs> biggest debunk with the Wendy theory is the ghosts themselves. Okay. Okay. Mm-hmm. And and what I mean by that is half of the Wendy theory like backup points, right? Is continuity errors where things move and things move back or things are gone that were there before, right? Yeah. Couldn't that have just all been the ghost the whole time? Could have. Just constantly changing it, you know, like making a second guess at reality. Do, do you believe in spirits? I do. Okay. So, yeah. like, have you ever had anything missing? I've not had things missing or moved, rather. Uh, moved, yeah. Like, the, you walk yeah. in a room and you're like, that cup was right there. I swore that cup was on that side of the table. Mm-hmm. Eh, yeah. Oh, well. And you just kind of go on with your life. Yeah. Well, how many things like that happen on a daily basis to all of us? Mm-hmm. And you just don't think about it. You're busy. You're on your way. I yeah. mean, it's just, it's just how we do, right? Could yeah. that have not just been the ghost moving things the entire time and making her kind of go crazy and making him agitated? And then ultimately at the very end of it, is this a ghost story or is this a possession where he is literally needing an exorcist because demons possess him to kill his family? So yeah. I look at The Shining more as a possession movie yeah, as opposed to a ghost too. story because mm-hmm. he becomes possessed. Yeah. Yeah. I like that one. Yeah. yeah. That's a good one. That's my favorite way. Like Regardless, it. yeah. it's just a classic freaking movie. Yeah. It's a you great watch book. watch it. It's so good. Yeah. Love whether it. Stephen King likes yeah. it or not, that's his vision. If I if I were to, if I wrote a song and then you recorded it, I'd be like, <laughs> that is not at all how that melody was supposed to go. Yeah. And I wa- that was supposed to be a sad song and you made it upbeat. It was in minor and you put it in major. Yeah. And I feel like that's just what, you know what I mean? Stanley did. Yeah. Yeah. And so it was, Stephen we have King to, is his own. And yeah. I think that's why when I started this part, or that's why when we started this episode, I wanted to say we're going to be talking about the movie version as opposed to the book and the, the warmer, colder version of it. Yeah. The book is very warm. That. The movie is very cold. And mm-hmm. I think we could just appreciate both as two completely, which I mean, lucky us. Now we get one movie that can look, be looked at 12 different ways. Mm-hmm. You can technically watch The Shining and think about the S abuse. Yeah. And then yeah. be like, what the hell? Yeah. And then you can watch Don't it again and be the Wendy like theory. Yeah. So believe this movie is whatever, but I know it's spirits. Yeah. I Because that's say, what's in the damn movie. If I had to put money on it, I would say spirits. <laughs> I would say spirits. Well, yeah, they're in possessed. the movie. There's ghosts. Yeah. Quite literally. And it's my favorite thing about the movie. So why would I not believe that? My favorite yeah. part about the movie is a woman in the bathtub yeah. before she gets gross. Yeah. Thank you guys <laughs> so much for watching this program. Uh, Thank you. I hope you like it. Okay. Thanks for coming yeah. on. Yeah. What are we done? What, what, what was, what was huh? here? Do this okay. turkey. I'm Thank done. you guys so much. If you don't like the content, I'm gonna make it anyway. We'll see you guys next week with another true crime episode. See ya. <laughs> but for real though, you believe in ghosts? I do. You have any ghost stories? <laughs>